Here it is, Ken Block's Audi Sport Quattro. Replica. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this chair number one? Double O one. Do we know that this is chair number one? <laughs> what chair, what numbers are those? Is that two and three? I don't know. They all say one. <laughs> this is chair number one. No, no, no. This is chair number 43. Whoa. Oh, no. You were sitting on it. Dang. Yo. So what's yours? If it's 66, this is crazy. 69. Three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Dale. Welcome back to Ringleaders. Today we're going to talk about Ken's Sport Quattro replica. Why don't we just start right off? I like the asterisks. No, 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 but I think it's super important because, <laughs> like, we bought a replica for a reason because you had an RS200, a one of 200 RS200, and it was, like, too valuable to drive hard. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily that, but, like, the, we had, had an Evo engine and it was already had a lot of horsepower. There aren't a lot of those in the Sport Quattro world. They're all, you know, Part of that 200 homologation number, they don't have much horsepower. They're not that much fun. An important point with this though is I want to drive this car, and I want to. I, I don't. I don't want to like worry about if I put it into a snowbank playing around in my hometown in the snow. I don't collect cars like as a collector. I have cars that I drive. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I hoard cars I don't drive. But it's cool. <laughs> I wouldn't really say collecting, but. It's fine. And my name is Brian. <laughs> I have a car camera. Big thanks to Toyo for showcasing our two builds in their booth, kind of creating an entire booth around our projects. They did a really good job with it. So Toyo is a great partner of mine for the race team. And to be able to be a part of this build has been very cool. And not only that, debuting it at the show. Yeah. and honestly giving a reason for Brian to finish his build. Because otherwise, if it didn't have to be in the Toyo booth, You might SEMA. not know this, but I've been sponsored by Toyo for way longer than Ken. I do static testing for their tires. <laughs> so if you missed it in last episode, we went to Germany to LCE, who specializes in building Sport Quattros. They actually could not build us a Sport Quattro as fast as we wanted one, which was in now, like tomorrow. Like zero time. Yeah, zero time. We needed it yesterday. So instead we bought their demo vehicle off of them, which is a vehicle called Turbo Monster, but that isn't, Ken didn't want a red car. So yeah. we went through a lot in, I don't know, a month and a half to completely strip this car down to a shell, paint it, bring it all back up, change a few other things. Imagine what Ken could do with a car if he had the 17 years I had to build mine. <laughs> oh, it's 17 years now. It's 16 <laughs> since I know you. So you've known about that car for 16 years. I had it for a whole year before I met you. You sold DC, got married, had a family, started and launched a rally career all before I got my car running. But more on my car next episode. For now, let's actually go take a look at this thing. The first thing that hits me, outside look, that it's white now. We painted the whole thing white. And that he didn't paint it flat black. Because <laughs> every other car you own is flat That's black. That's true. It's we talk a lot about this internally, which is body and white. And I've had a lot of white cars in my past. Can I stop you for a second? Yeah. To define body and white, when rally cars are built and they come off like the factory, they were, it's referred to as a body and white delivery, which means they take a almost finished production car and it's all in white, right? That's like where the body in white idea came from. So if you're a rally fan, body in white is usually the first time you get to see the new generation rally car before they put a livery package on it. So it was just an all white car. So that really reminds me of a stock rally car before you put all the graphics on This is so. pretty much a rally car, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. yeah. So th that's why I wanted all white. I've, I've had a lot of white cars in my past, but now with uh, the Audis uh, that we're doing this year, I wanted to kind of have a new theme and I wanted to go all white. So this is the start of that. So the nice big grills, leaving everything black there that makes sense, but adding some very simple retro style graphics. Brian actually found some old photos of Audis with this sort of Chevron look. There's been a lot of different variations of graphics from, 
you know, the brown and white and yellow and red. And But they haven't had something really, really distinct like this, but we found this and really like this. This was so. a little bit more of a rare, like I think most people think the S1 E2 is like yeah. the classic Audi livery, but this was actually a little bit of an earlier design, which is super cool. And I love it on here because it's that subtle kind of like, you get it, but it's not garish. Like you could drive this on the street. If you know, you know. Yeah. It's the if you know, you know livery. It really is. And yeah. because you watch this, now you know. You're welcome. <laughs> and a lot of other details too, so that you can drive it on the street, not making it too obnoxious. The gray on white for the wind windshield banner, the subtle. Best part. 80s graphics directly from Audi that we were able to put on the doors. That, see, you know, just hanging on this for one second, when we were at Audi Tradition, a lot of the race cars from the 80s and 90s had this like gradiated Audi logo. Ken saw that thing and he's like, uh, Timo, yeah. uh, let's put that on order, please. It looks so good on here. It was actually a factory design that ended up on all the race cars too. Right. And they used that, it was on the like rally cars, but also very prominent on like the early DTM car. That's a really nice touch. But then we have a little touch of some modern here with, you know, the, the sponsors that are part of the program. Obviously, Audi, Hoonigan, Rotiform, and Toyo Tires, some of my current livery elements, along with LCE High Performance, which is where the car came from. So yeah, externally, I really like the look and I love 80s graphics, so... This was really kind of a dream come true to... I mean, really, just everything. like this? Yeah. yeah. And this yeah. is everything. I don't know if you could tell. Ken, big fan of fonts, big fan of graphics and graphic design, especially and from the And big fan era. of box flares. Yeah. So this is everything hey, that yeah. Ken This is everything you wanted. Hey, this is all you really ever yeah. wanted in life. <laughs> So this wheel is based off of what was on the S1 E2. They were magnesium. They were a much smaller wheel. We've kind of reimagined it with Rotiform. It's sort of based on actually their ROC wheel in some ways, like the engineering is, but we changed a bunch of stuff. So we added this lip here. We added this extra groove here, a super deep dog bowl here to look like the motorsport wheels of like the early 80s. So they're actually calling it the ROC H because it's like the Hoonigan version of that the wheel. stamping. We and got the stamping in there. That's with the sizing. so cool. And this to me was such like a motorsports thing because like on a motorsports wheel, they don't really care how it looks. It has to do its job. And it's like if there's information that needs to be on it, they just write it on the spoke. Like they don't put it in the back. Stamp that in. I loved how that all looked. And Rotiform put this yep. together in that short amount of time. That's Brian went right up on that deadline too. <laughs> they put these together in zero time for this Sorry. car and your car. So yep. thank you Rotiform for being able to deliver us wheels in two weeks. The wheels make the car yeah. too. Yeah. It's wrapped in, of course, the Toyo R888 R's. It looks proper on here. That's such a good looking tire. And a nice sticky tire at nice that. Nice sticky tire, 255s all around. I mean, it's a very nice modern take on that old rally wheel. Cause it, it looks like a motorsport, like a tarmac rally tire a little bit with the big side cuts mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. It's a good setup. It is. So on the actual body and chassis, right? So we explained this before, but this car was built uh, by LCE in the same way that Audi used to build the sport quattros back in the day. And what that was is actually taking two cars, right? Taking the back half of a coupe, front half of a 4000, chopping them, changing the floor plan out, doing a bunch of different things so that you can get this short wheelbase, which is like 12 and a half inches shorter than a regular Quattro. That made it handle a lot better because one of the problems while all wheel drive was really fast in the gravel, on tarmac, they found the car is kind of hard to move around hairpins and things like that. So they gave it this really, like really, really short wheelbase, which makes it so that it's a full commitment car. And Ken's gonna find that out in a few episodes. Apparently the only way to rotate it is with as much anger as possible. Well, I, I did experience you did that, that in, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but true. But they didn't let you go full anger commitment. Know, this also, thing will be full commitment. It also didn't have a handbrake, so. That too. <laughs> but if you look real closely in the paint, you will notice that that is not orange peel, that's a weave, because the entire body is a mixture of carbon and carbon Kevlar. So you've got these, these, even the roof panel. So think about how lightweight this thing probably is because you've got carbon and even the bumpers, wing and everything, the entire thing is carbon Kevlar or carbon 
depending on. So for the non-Audi nerds, what are the what are the main takeaways for you on the shortened version? There's different windshield angles. There's different B pillars. This has all the right things. There was a few companies that used to make shortened Air Quattros back in the day, like Dialinks and a few things like that. And not all of them did the steep window angle. So they did a steep window angle, and it's reportedly for two reasons. One, drivers complained about reflections in the glass, so a steeper angle gets less reflections. But the other one, which there's a huge argument as to how important that was was that if you took a coupe angle, right, the windshield now ends up here, and you have that much less room between your helmet and the windscreen, which also creates more reflection. So it was kind of the combination of the two. Fight me on that. The more you People know. People in the comments are already talking, talking shit on that one. Of course. The real Audi nerds now. And really, just overall, it just doesn't have that look. This has that, like, boxy, that, like, this is the visual that you it's always had. ugly beauty. Like, beauty. really, if you looked at the ugly side beauty. of this, you wouldn't be like, wow. That's it's, the they story. They really nailed the lines on that car. <laughs> That's the story of what makes rally cars cool. It's all it's function. Yeah, it's all function. 100% function. function. Yeah. It was designed with a T-square and a protractor. Let's start with the seats. We got Recaro Pole Position Classics. So this is actually a seat that they brought back because it was a classic seat. And when we were looking for seats, all right, I sent Ken the link for this and I didn't even realize that in the link it said Walter Rawl approved. There's like a photo of Walter yeah. Rawl and I'm like, all right, that's clearly the seat. That's pretty cool. So. We were trying to link together a bit of the graphics from my current livery in. And we didn't want to do very much on the exterior. So we decided to do something on the seat. So I think that this pattern, same thing I'm wearing. Also the same thing on the Modernica chair. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Almost <laughs> the exact same concept. But honestly, it's that subtle kind of touch where you start looking at this car and you notice all the little details. Like that's a great little detail to add on the street car. I, I think it looks amazing. It's really a matter of mixing some old with some new. And yeah. I mean, we happen to have a Walter Roll signature on this car. <laughs> Small flex. Do you, do you not have that on your car? No, I, Uncle Walter hasn't come over yet. <laughs> do you have a handbrake? I do. Oh, is I it do bigger have a than mine? It's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I made it two inches bigger just because. <laughs> but speaking about the handbrake, that handbrake's actually pretty special. That is the backup handbrake for the Huna truck. I had three of them made yeah. because we snapped a handbrake that one time on set, remember? So it was like, oh, let's just make extras. And it's been sitting in my office forever. Full aggressive. And there it is. I love that we have the fuses on the dashboard. Fuses so on the dash is such spot. a rally thing. <sighs> This is like full Group B stuff back in the day. Actually, not even Group B. Just group rally a, stuff. Old school rally stuff was having fuses on the dashboard, random toggle switches. With the, badly with the labeled. Label. Yeah, badly <laughs> labeled, yeah. But the reason for the fuses on the dashboard is so that your co-driver could change out like fuses if something pops. So you're driving, the headlights go out, and you're like, oh, just throw another another blade. Yeah, you think about it now, modern rally cars just have that one big ECU center with well, all the buttons. Everything's a PDM now. Everything's right? a PDM. By the way, I think there's a lot of work that still needs to go on in, inside this car. Oh, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Like, like I said, this is a first, first, it's, it's first, a first iteration. Version. This is V1. By the way, CAE shifter, nice little cable shifter that's connected to an O1E six-speed trans. These did not originally come with a six-speed. They just came with a basic five-speed, so it's a much nicer and much stronger transmission. And then that's connected to some massive Porsche six pots. Yeah, and then some KWs, which I think are like a V3. So you just want to get under the hood. You can see the KWs All from right, under fine, the hood. Fine. Let's do it I want here. to see. So this is actually quite different than what came in the original Sport Quattro. While the Sport Quattro was available in a 20 valve, this is a more modern 20 valve, but it's a bit of a Frankenstein setup. You have a 3B style head, which was like, which came in S2s, Audi 200s, things like that. But then the bottom end is actually out of a Eurovan and it actually came out of a diesel. And that's to push it to a 2.5, right? This came stock as a 2.2. So it's a 2.5 bottom on it. And it's got a bunch of goodies in it. The dyno chart says that it ran a 736, 736 horsepower uh, as it sits like this. <laughs> That's Just pretty kind sick. kind of wild to think, because the rally cars had like 350 in them, 400. Yeah. But then there's also a bunch of other small stuff in here that you don't notice. You've got this massive Wagner tuning uh, intercooler, which from what I've been told is a prototype item, because I have not actually seen this thing available. It's a really nice piece. Comes with this really nice support bar that you can kind of see through here as Hit well. Hit it with the mesh. All together. You're, you're a little jealous of the mesh. I am. The this bumper. is like this like weird, like 80s grid. Well, it looks like, um, like overhead lighting covers. Right, which right. 
which right. I really yeah. am stoked on. Yeah. yeah, this is really nice. My kit doesn't have that. And then on top of all that, so then you've got, this is basically like a Garrett 30. Slightly modified. G series? Yeah, like a G30. You'll notice there is not a radiator in the car, so you have this huge intercooler. Radiator is mounted in the back. So all the plumbing goes off of here and out to the back that way. Well, you forgot to mention the very nice uh, strut bar here on top and the KW suspension you see poking out the top. And the special thing about these, they're not V3s, they're not club sports. These are the motorsport edition KW shocks, which just means way better valving. Not that club sports are bad, but these are like motorsport spec, like full overbuilt, everything ready to go. I don't know, I nerd out about that stuff because KW does really cool street stuff and motorsport, and these are the motorsport versions. Man, all right, I gotta get one more look at this thing. Just from the side, it just looks so good. You did well, Ken, you did well. Brian, how hard has it been for you not talking about your car? Is it like that meme? With the kid that's like got the vein. I have been out talking about neck. my car though. Not they're just cut, they just cut it. it all out. That's true. That's true. It's, I probably filmed enough of the episode of my car. It's just in the <laughs> around background. Ken's car. For now, Ken's got the coolest street car out of all of us. I, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely Sorry, didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing about this too, though, I haven't even driven this thing yet. So you know, in typical fashion, as a race car driver, I'll need to tinker and play with setups mm -hmm. and power delivery and how the handbrake works and probably tweak some of the- Little uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the visual stuff. Develop. Yeah, but as a starting point, I like very much. Yeah, I mean, we did rush to get these cars ready for SEMA, which means that, you know, you cut a few corners as you'll see next week on my car. Oh, oh this is really get. slippery. It is slippery. It's really slippery. <laughs> <laughs> These things could use a five-point harness. How we've gotten anywhere. <laughs>